What? I was not expecting that. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Oh, hello, Chip Dippers. Welcome to Retro Recipes. Now, I had a lot of fun with that recent video, which is faster, Commodore 64 or a MacBook Pro. And the other day, we were watching one of our favorite movies, War Games, for about the 64th time. And of course, it has that famous line in there. Now about the nice game of chess. So then I thought, what if we ignored speed and instead looked at AI, artificial intelligence? Yeah, you've got a lot of that. Now, of course, in 1997, IBM's Deep Blue computer famously beat Garry Kasparov at chess. The first time a computer had ever beaten a champion or a dog. Unfortunately, Gary was unavailable for my little rematch video. But what if we could pit a 1987 Commodore Amiga against a modern computer, say a MacBook? Well, it should be possible to take the moves from one computer and type them into the other computer. That computer will think it's the human that thought up that move when actually it came from the other machine. In fact, I think it's going to be so interesting that for once, chess won't make you bored. Get it? Chess? Bored? King of comedy. Welcome to Retro Recipes. Welcome. So we'll get to the big match in just a moment. But first, what about that IBM Deep Blue computer? Well, Kaspar K Kasparov uh, had beaten it 4-2 in 1996, but Deep Blue asked for a rematch. Well, I mean, it didn't ask itself. Uh, IBM did. It's not that smart. Deep Blue was then heavily upgraded and played K Kasparov uh, again in May 1997. Deep Blue won by one game, becoming the first computer system to defeat a reigning world chess champion. Incredibly, Kasparov then allegedly accused IBM of cheating and demanded a rematch. IBM refused and dismantled Deep Blue. It's not clear why they did that, but I don't think it cheated. Even though it foiled the Turing test, a measure of whether a human can tell it's playing a computer or not, it wasn't really intelligent, not like chess players are. Like all chess AI engines, it was just following programming. Here's how computers did it back then. Simply, the computer progresses down the branches of a thought tree called Minimax. Each branch represents possible future moves by both sides. It scores each branch and then uses the opening move of the highest scoring branch. Now, I mentioned war games, but did you know Matthew Broderick used a modified 1975 IMSAI 8080 running at a whoppering 2 megahertz? But you don't need to use your modem to dial up to the government anymore to play chess. Chess games are everywhere now. Even a Tesla can play you at chess while you wait at the traffic lights. And I just noticed this little war games easter egg in the Tesla. One of the skill levels is called Joshua, the human name given to the war games computer. I'm play my pawn to there. Hey, oh come on Joshua. I'm my knight to here. Yes. Oh, for goodness sake, you stupid piece of sh- uh, I was gonna say sheet metal. But the limiting factor, even for today's cars at computers, is that there are 10 to the power of 123 possible moves in a chess game. That's nearly twice the number of atoms in the universe. As they say in America, ain't not nobody's got time for that or something. So the computer essentially only thinks as deep as three moves ahead, aka three ply, like loo roll. Do you mean toilet paper? Hey, get out of my voiceover booth. But anyway, since Deep Blue or the 1987 Commodore Amiga, a couple of key things have advanced. One, processor speed. This means the computer can explore perhaps 2,000 more branches in the same amount of time. Number two, the search is more efficient today, ignoring predictably unuseful branches that the Amiga would still waste time looking down, and other things like better tuned algorithms learned by playing with itself. Uh, <clears throat> well, and in theory, the Mac will slaughter the Amiga because it's faster and its AI is smarter, and I won't demand a rematch like Casper Kasparov. 
Okay, you're probably wondering why I keep pretending to mispronounce his name. Well, me and my friend Ali Fraktik genuinely had trouble with his name. And back in 1987, I thought it would be fun to phone a software shop and mix up Anatoly Karpov and Gary Kasparov uh, when asking them for Kasparov's computer game. Yes, you could literally beat him at his own game. Not 29.99. Okay. And is that is definitely Karpanov's challenge, is it? Yeah. yeah right. Correct. Yeah. That's the new one. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> Poor guy. But to try to make it super fair, for this gambit, we'll play at least three games, and each time with different programs. We should also try to match the ELO skill rating of each AI. ELO is basically a rating that goes from Senior Master right down to Class J. I think I'm somewhere near W. So to start with, we'll play the stock chess app that comes with the Mac versus Battle Chess on the Amiga, both around the level of a Class B or C player. But don't worry, logic would dictate that the Mac would still win because it could get more thinking done in the same amount of time, even with the same ELO rating. Well. Well, no, I won't give you any spoilers, just stay tuned. And then we'll move up to Real Chess 3D, which has the highest star rating on the app star, store, I mean, uh, versus Chess Master 2000 on the Miggy. And we'll finish with High Arx Chess Explorer, which Casper, that guy, the chess guy, said was much better positionally than Deep Blue. Wow. And we'll play that against Sargon 3 on the Amiga which has beaten a chess master who was rated at 2200. But that would be unfair, so we'll try to set each game to comparable skill levels. And, well, on its highest skill level, the Amiga will take four days to move one chess piece. Now seriously, an average chess game of 40 moves would take it nearly six months to complete. So you'll forgive me for not using a Commodore 64 or an Amstrad PCW. And now you've got all that info, there's only one thing left. How about a nice game of chess? And we are joined by... Lidofractic. So you are the aluminium corner again? Uh, rose gold aluminium corner. You, you are the rose gold corner again. That's easier to spell in British. Uh, and I'm on the Amiga, going to be playing Battle Chess, everybody's favourite chess game. Lady Fractic, I don't think, has seen it. So let's boot it up. Well, we've hit our first problem with the Mac is it has to download an update. Bless you. Thank you. Or should I say Jesse? <laughs> uh, while that's downloading, I'm just going to load up Battle Chess. And uh, assisting us with the adjudication is Puppy Fractic. That's you, right? Yeah. I know. She's wishing <laughs> What is going on? She's just sneaking she in your mouth. She never does this. What are you doing? Okay, so we've got both the games queued up. And three quick things you need to know. The Mac is always going to be playing from the top of the board down with the black pieces, with the Amiga playing from the bottom of the board up. And I will keep skipping ahead during the waiting phases, but you can still check how much time has elapsed using this handy here clock. Yeah, we have a lot of options here. <laughs> oh, they're flapping. It's the angels bringing us the options. So you're just going to mirror that on the Mac. And now the Mac plays its turn. Pawn D7 to D5. Surprise. Okay, so as long as I don't get the wrong piece, we should be able to now have both computers playing one another. Pawn E7 to E5. On E7 to E5. It's pretty pretty quick, isn't it, the Amiga? Yeah. On D5 takes E4. Aha. Uh -huh. So now the Amiga's going to think I'm really smart. Are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. Watch this. She'd never seen this before. Now the 
Amiga gives its response. And for efficiency, I won't keep showing you the duplicate moves on the other machine, unless they have really interesting animations. Queen D8 takes D1. Ah! <laughs> Check. <sighs> it's disappointing. Oh, she's got quite a shimmy. Sassy pants. <laughs> That's the way to do it. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Okay, I saw that coming. King takes queen. Oh, oh. What the hugging? What? <laughs> Ah, that was amazing. <laughs> okay. Should I laugh at it? That's definitely dated. It's very... Okay. Okay. Much less violent. So civilized. Knight B8 to C6. So knights can only move in an L shape, and they're the only piece that can jump over other pieces. That's how it was able to get from behind those pawns. Because it's horsey. Right, come on, knight. This one doesn't jump. He's got no horse. I swear it's, it's like, pardon me, pardon me. Mega is thinking. I like that the icon is the thinking man, but sitting on a computer. Bishop c8 to f5. Bishops can only move diagonally. See, look, it's the thinking man. Yes. It's actually Bruce Forsyth. Queen side. Oh, well. So the castle can only go uh, in straight lines, otherwise known as the brook. And it's the only piece that can switch. There we go. Ah. Rook D8 to D7. I thought the Mac would have slaughtered the Amiga by now, but they're actually having an involved, pretty good game of chess. All right, my little pawn has gone forward to... Pawn. Pawn. Right? Pawn. Pawn. Pawn F7 to F6. She's American, she's cheating. Is it thinking? No, that was your move. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm so busy thinking He's about never pawn. never played before, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Pawn G7 takes F6. Pawn cheese. <laughs> Bishop scared. Knight C6 to E7. Pawn C7 to C6. I feel like it's taking a little bit longer now because yeah. it's a bit more complicated. But still limiting itself to about 20 seconds. Bishop F5 takes G4. It's not very ladylike. <laughs> oh, we're waiting on yours. Are you thinking? Does the pawn actually beat the bishop? Sounds like the beginning of a joke. Knight GA takes F6. Let's see how a knight assaults a bishop. Sounds like the beginning of a joke. Off with his head. <laughs> you okay. Sad. <sighs> Thank goodness for that. Pawn C6 takes D5. He hit him in the crotch. <laughs> Good night. Wait, oh, so I've got check. Yep. King 
C8 to B8. I mean, that's kind of amazing that even if the Amiga loses, the Amiga still got check against the mm -hmm. Mac. The Mac got it much sooner. Mac but, got it straight away. But the Amiga has been able to elude it the whole time. D7 to D5. Yeah. Okay. Bishop G4 to F3. Knight D5 takes F4. PCBY are absolutely terrible at making chess boards, but if you need some PCBs, we, we, we recommend... Okay, Alma Fudd. PCBY! Because as we all know, PCB stands for... Printed Circuit. No, but, but, uh, playing chess boards. Bishop F8 takes D6. Rook HA to C8. Bishop D6. No. no, you've ruined it. I did. I did. If only you could take it back. Oh, I'll take it there back. There we go. Okay. Let's see what you got now. Did you see how fast she responded? She was like, I'm going to murder you. Bishop well, D6 to B4. Check. Oh, it's exposed the rook at the top of the board. Oh. By getting out of the way, the rook could now travel straight down and take the king. It's actually very educational for someone like me that does not play chess yeah. and would not have. Reminding me some. Knight f6 takes d5. Oh. Some techniques, but not that one. So, how far can the king move? The king can only move one piece at a time. I'm seeing the end of the game coming. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> oh no. That's first one of the Oh. That's an interesting move. I don't know if there was much. I mean, there's thought behind all of these, but. Yeah. I don't know what that would have achieved. Knight d5 to e3. Checkmate. That's it. Let's move it on here. Let's see if the Amiga agrees. What if the Amiga found a way out of it? I would be very impressed. <laughs> uh, so now it's calculating what its options are. What? It's taking the king. Oh. Checkmate. It finishes the game. Off with his crown. <laughs> I don't remember that. Okay. Is your king going to get naked? No. I guess he's already naked. Yeah. All I can see is his wood. <laughs> well, there you go. So, probably not a huge surprise. The Mac beat the Amiga and took its clothes off. Um, but that took a lot longer than I thought. That took a really long time, yeah. These are both set to the default basic levels. And the Amiga even got check against the Mac at one point. Anyway, well, I think all we can do is move on to two different games. Okay. See if with more intelligent games on both sides, we get a better result. So now we've got Real Chess 3D versus The Chess Master 2000. And as the graphics aren't quite so interesting, although they're still pretty beautiful, I think, on the Amiga, to speed things along, I'm going to mute the commentary and just show each individual move from each machine. So now over to the Amiga for the opening move. I am The Chess Master. Wow. Pretty sexy, huh? Okay. Looks almost just like this. <laughs> Gotcha. Hey, mate. Oh, dang. Wait, the Amiga? Yeah. We just answered the question, can an Amiga beat a modern day Mac at chess? Yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> I was not expecting that. Wow. Wow. We're going to start again. We'll move up the uh, difficulty to see what happens. The max on normal. Yeah. And this is going up to, the Mega's going up to, we should put this up to number four. This can take 60 minutes per move. Yeah. Chessmaster had this great feature I have to show you called If the Boss Wanders By. <laughs> Can you guess what this does? Um, I'm going to guess that it flips it to like an Excel spreadsheet or something. Yep. <laughs> Did you know? But you have to be working for a real estate company if you oh. use this. There's even an option to show it thinking down that thought tree, although unfortunately it obscures the board. Still fascinating to see. All right, back to chess. Stage we're running out of daylight, so we're going to move the Amiga back to level one, as it seems to be doing fairly well. Pawn will noted the queen. If your pawn gets to the end, it becomes a queen. <laughs> oh, you are in big, boo, big, big doo doo, boo boo. Big boo, -boo. <laughs> You're in big doo doo, boo boo. Yeah, the queen's gonna f him up. She gonna kill you. Yeah. Oh, is he trying to get multiple queens? Are you kidding? <laughs> Good tactics, Amiga. Oh, oh, we're getting in position. Check. Mate in one. Oh, check, mate. You lose. Thank God. <laughs> Don't say thank God. You lost. An hour later, I'm ready to lose. So it is now two game. 2-1 to the Amiga on default settings or on medium. On this program. On this program. Wow. Now chess matches are usually either 2-4 or 6 games with no tiebreaker, so let's do one really quick final game. The incredible Hyarx Chess Explorer versus Sargon 3 on the Amiga. And we'll set Hyarx ELO rating to 2200 to match Sargon. So it's interesting to see on the map, given each one a score graph. 
uh, of what's the most likely to get the highest score. Knight to F3. This is so fast, it's insane. And this time to really simplify things, let's just watch all the moves on one screen. Just remember, Amiga's white, Mac is black. So now I think it's run out of opening moves from the database and now it's using the AI. So it's scanning down the tree and uh, looking at all the potential moves. And just above that, you can see it's giving a score. So Ooh. Checkmate. So let's just do it on here. Yeah. I lose. We <laughs> got we got two little windows in it. Checkmate, I lose. Checkmate. You lost. <sighs> that was that was Yeah. That was a good game. I can't deny that I wanted the Amiga to win. But I suppose it would have been ridiculous if the Amiga had won this whole match, uh, four games that we played. But the final score is two games to the Amiga, two games to the map, which means it's a draw. It's the wrong hand. <laughs> but I'm amazed, you know, if the Mac is 2,000 times faster than the Amiga, the Amiga would have got a lot less thinking done. Pretty stunning that it managed to win two games out of four. Now, sure, the obvious answer of why it won is that Chess 3D wasn't as skilled as we thought, though we did match the skill levels, even moving the Amiga down to easy at one point, and it still won. But I do have another theory. In that other video I explored Worth's Law, and you've heard of Moore's Law. Now I don't think those are happening here, but what about a new law? That AI, trained only with modern data or self-play, can still be bamboozled by old data. A sort of AI tunnel vision. I guess what I mean is that what if the Amiga is kind of like the wise old man playing chess in the park using dated techniques that the teenage champion didn't expect? Of course, that's kind of a romanticized view and may not be true at all. But if you're a chess expert, a chess expert, I'd love to hear your conclusion of why a 2000 times slower computer can still achieve a draw. I'll tell you one thing that I can conclude, chess was a lot more fun back in the Amiga days. He hit him in the crotch. As always, thanks for watching. Subscribe below. And, and cheerio. Cheerio. Do you want a nice game of thermonuclear war? Yes. Let's go. Battle chest? Yes. Sorry, I've got Harry Potter. Harry Potter? Do you say Harry Potter? That's his name. Do it again. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. <laughs> say Harry. Harry. Say Prince. Say Prince Harry. Prince Harry. Prince Harry. <laughs> Prince Harry. Harry in American Harry. is Harry. Oh, because you pronounce the I quite. There's no I to pronounce. There's no I in hair? Hey, I are. <laughs> As opposed to your That's first. That's quite a good southern accent. Hey, I are. Oh.